Hi everybody, Network Waste Kid here and today we're going to look at configuring Cisco Firepower Next Generation IPS in passive mode. This is the last video on the implementing next generation IPS modes which is covered in the blueprint securing networks with Cisco Firepower version 1. So main points that I have noted as part of my studies is that the Passive mode is also known as monitoring mode. So essentially going on to the second point there, we're not blocking traffic. Um, passive mode doesn't have the ability to block traffic. So it's essentially operating in IDS mode, so intrusion detection only. You do however have the option to reset malicious traffic, but this shouldn't be used as a attack prevention mechanism. If you want to um, prevent attacks or have your firepower device used as an act uh, to, to prevent attacks then you should uh, be using inline or inline tap to see more about inline or inline tap modes you can see my previous videos which are covered uh, in this CCIE security playlist both deployment modes are supported, so rooted and transparent mode both support um, passive modes. Passive mode is supported when connected to a switch that uses span. So you need to ensure that the switch uh, that the device is connected to or the interface that's operating in passive mode is configured with span. Last of all, Snort Inspection Engine is applied on copied traffic. So the traffic that is sent from the switch to the uh, firepower device is run through the Snort Inspection Engine to assess uh, whether that traffic is deemed malicious or not, essentially. We do also have ER span, which is remote span. Um, that will be covered in a separate video. Um, it won't be covered in this demonstration today. So to configure passive mode, pretty straightforward, covered in three steps. So the first one is to configure the passive interface mode. And we'll take a look at all these when we jump into the demonstration shortly. The second is to configure span on the switch or the switches depending on your environment and last of all you can configure an intrusion policy so the intrusion policy is obviously there to um, either reset or to identify any malicious traffic that's potentially uh, flowing through that switch uh, where the, um, the copies of the traffic are sent to the firepower device So for our demonstration today, we have the same topology as the previous uh, videos that we've been demonstrating the different next generation IPS modes. However, uh, we've slightly modified it so we can include the uh, switch that will be configured with span and uh, we have another interface now which is GIG02 hanging off the firepower device and that's going to be used as our passive interface. So what we'll do is we'll jump straight now into the demonstration. So logged into the FMC we need to head over to devices, device management and then we need to select the relevant device and as I mentioned before, GIG02 is going to be our passive um, int interface that's going to be used um, connecting to the switch as we showed on the uh, demonstration. So if we just flick back there, we can see uh, we've got GIG02 on the firepower device connecting to uh, the span switch. So what we need to do is we need to configure GIG02 so that it's a passive interface. So we 
click the little pencil icon we can give it a, a name if we want so let's just call it passive for the sake of this demonstration and then under mode what we need to do is we need to change that from non to passive and as you can see all of the different configuration tabs which are present uh, pretty much go away aside from the duplex and speed which is under the hardware configuration tab we do have the option to specify an MTU and if we want to we can still specify a security zone <coughs> last of all ensure the little checkbox is enabled to enable an interface for uh, your passive interface once that's done let's go ahead and we will click OK and we'll save those changes okay and just before we deploy the policy let's just have a look at our access control policy So currently I have configured a permit any any rule which is currently disabled as you can see there so that's irrelevant really and what we've got here is an IPS policy um, so let's have a look what we've got configured so we've got tap policy configured at the moment so that's from the previous video but we can leave that we can leave the the default uh, intrusion prevention policy on there enabled what the purpose of, of this demonstration is just to show that we can see that traffic um, flowing and we can see those in the in the logs so if we go to analysis connections and events right now we can see that we've got no recorded traffic so what we'll do is we'll go ahead and press deploy to finish the deployment of those uh, of that passive interface and while that's deploying what we'll do now is we'll configure span on the switch just leave that up there in the background so to configure spine it's pretty straightforward we'll do monitor question mark and you can see we've got two options so it's session so we're going to configure a new special session and we'll call um, we'll give session one this number and then our source is going to be an interface uh, and we can specify the uh, direction of the floor so we'll just go ahead and select both so that's the source so now we need to specify where to send the copies of these packets so we'll do monitor session one destination interface and it's uh, da, 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 da. and it's fast ethernet 1.2 which connects to the um, firepower device so if you do show show run include monitor we should have two lines so there we go so we can see that we specified our source interface and we've got uh, the direction for both set and then we can see that we've also specified the destination as well so that passive interface should now have been uh, deployed so what we'll do is we'll just generate some flows between both both VPCs, VPC 8 and 9. So I'm going to ping 192.168.30.20, which is VPC 9. We can see that that's successful. 
and likewise I'm going to do the same opposite so if I just do ping 192.168.30.10 again we can see that that's successful as well so if we just go back to our firepower and we refresh this what we can see now is the traffic from both 30.10 ICMP going to 30.20 and we can also see the traffic from 30.20 going to 30.10 so this shows that we've now configured um, our passive interface mode next generation IPS mode passive and we've also configured the switch correctly to send copies of those packets to the firepowered device so if we just head back to the topology again you know we've got the gig02 on the firepower device which is our passive interface we can see that the traffic between VPC8 and VPC9 is not in line to the firepower device so essentially it's going only over the switch to either device depending on where the traffic is coming from um, so it's, it's not going through the fire de power device however because we've configured span on the uh, switch we can see that traffic on the fire power device because we are we are sending copies of those uh, packets to the fire power device that's it for the demonstration today I hope you found this useful um, our next videos will start to focus on 1.3 of the securing networks for Cisco Firepower version 1.0 300-710 exam blueprint um, but it's also relevant for anybody that's uh, looking at the security core or the score um, exam these links are useful links that may help you if you're looking at configuring uh, passive interfaces or want to find out more information I will also include these links in my video description if you enjoyed this video please like subscribe and if you want to stay up to date with the latest videos that are published you can go ahead and hit the notifications tab that way every time I publish a new video you will receive an email and be able to uh, watch that video till next time thank you for watching